Why should sovereignty be the leading principle here, according to you, Douglas? Sure. I'd just point out before answering that, that uh, we didn't get an answer still on institutions, but, but let's park that. Um, sovereignty of the British people is an extraordinarily important concept, and I think it is in other countries as well. It's just it's clearly something that the British feel particularly strongly about. Uh, in recent years, it's been very striking seeing international observers claiming that the British public, for instance, couldn't possibly understand the concept of sovereignty. I know my own country pretty well, and I know that it is a very deep uh, seated thing that the public do understand. The opinion polls show very clearly, including, by the way, the opinion polls since the vote, show very clearly the extent to which the British public think that sovereignty is the, the fundamental uh, uh, basis for political order. Uh, of course, it's, it is the case to cite an institution which, again, we, we didn't get any, but, but let me throw one out. Um, there are institutions like, for instance, the, uh, uh, the court in Strasbourg, uh, which have, uh, they're relatively new institutions. Uh, they clearly have some conflict with national um, governments and things including national security on occasions, and I could bore you with many cases of that. Um, uh, which mean that, for instance, publics recognise that there are some institutions that are contrary to other institutions and that the newer institutions might be, therefore, uh, reasonably criticised without being insulted or, or dismissed or derided. I would suggest that in recent years, the British public increasingly started to feel uh, uh, that they did not know um, the answer to what Tony Benn, uh, a prominent socialist politician of the last century, described as being the fundamental questions that all people of the left, he said, but they, I think left and right, we can unite in, on this, that he said that there are a fundamental set of questions which all publics should be able to have answers to. They included, uh, if you spoke to somebody in power, how did you get power, who can take it away, uh, and several others. These, these, this is quite a good distillation of a fundamental um, point, which is, uh, do the public, or did the public, shall I say, in Britain, feel that they knew who was in power, they had a good say in those people being in power, and they knew how to get them out of power? Now, it was the insight of the British public, and again, I wouldn't deride us all as fools and populists. It was the, it was the view of the majority of the British public that we had lost sight of the levers of governance. That is, we looked at Brussels, we looked at Strasbourg, and we saw people that we hadn't put there making decisions over us. We couldn't get rid of them. We didn't know how to get rid of them. There seemed to be no way to get rid of them. Jean-Claude Juncker seemed to be in there for life, whatever happened. Uh, and, uh, and we made a fundamental recognition that there might be troubles in the years ahead, there might be advantages, there are pros and cons to absolutely everything. But that the fundamental issue was that we should be able to know how to get people into power and how to get them out. And that is one of the absolutely funda fundamental issues of sovereignty. And I think it's a great sadness to me. Uh, again, uh, anyone who knows my work knows this is my view. It's a great sadness to me that those people who were advocates of the EU were not able to listen over the course of, well, three decades since Maastricht to the concerns of majority populations that this fundamental sovereignty issue should have been addressed. Let, let's and see it's if the sadness Flavia, that it never was. Let's see if, if you... So I just want to basically sort of sum up what, um, you know, Douglas is saying is that, that the British public was saying, look, we need to maintain sovereignty for ourselves as British citizens. It can't be, the sovereignty cannot be dealt from Washington, D.C., which it's, I mean, policy-wise is different, okay? I mean, that's a different, that's foreign policy, treaties, those kind of things or whatever. But certainly, it's not that the United States is handing out policy or edicts or demands or rules of law and saying, hey, United Kingdom, hey, Britain, you better follow this or else. That's not what's happening from the United States, but from Brussels, you know, Belgium we're talking about, from Strasbourg, from other places in the EU. It was like you said, there were people that weren't elected by the British public. So if they weren't elected, they can't get rid of them. They can't unelect them. And these laws and these policies were being put in place for the collective, not for the sovereign state of the UK or for a sovereign state of other nations. And so they basically felt, majority of British citizens felt that, hey, we're going in the wrong direction. This has been going on for over three or four decades and it needs to stop, and we want out. 
We want to dictate the course of our own sovereignty with the people that we can elect, that we can hold the fire to, that we can unelect if need be. That's what he's talking about. That's an institution of a, of in itself, which is the sovereignty of each nation should be decided by the citizens of that nation through a democratic or republic process. Let's see what Flavia has to say in her response now. You helped Flavia to come to a better understanding of your fundamental understanding of sovereignty because it was a question of yours. Did he make clear for you why sovereignty is the leading principle here, although it's not really benefiting individual um, No, for people? me, not so much. I mean, you quoted on the statistics, which is interesting, but then uh, to me, this is rather a problem of political education, if people don't know what sovereignty means and how it's being created. Um, but maybe I can come up with a different case. Again, I like practical cases, so we can speak about something concrete. And, for example, Switzerland and... Uh, population was asked whether we want uh, the, to accept the kind of, it was really called the self-determination initiative. You uh, have to explain it, that one. It was about um, placing Swiss legislation over international legislation, a kind of Switzerland first initiative. It would have also caused that Switzerland would have had to step out of the European Human Rights Convention. Um, so just to give you a bit of an idea how I would say extreme this demand was, but I mean, it, it was asked, the Swiss could vote on it, and with a vast majority, we rejected that vote. So again, I would say we discussed broadly about the meaning and the importance of sovereignty in the t Switzerland in the 21st century, and so the Swiss population said, uh, actually, we see a value in international law, and we see a value in uh, holding our word uh, when we agree on contracts with other states, because we see that it's better to be in close collaboration uh, instead of being isolated uh, as a country. Now, when she was talking about that the Swiss, listen, okay, the Swiss, she's saying that there was... Uh, an edict, um, it was a law that was going to be say that do we put Switzerland at the top first and then international second. And she said majority of Swiss, because these are all leftists, lunatics, these are socialists, Marxists, many of them, okay? It's a pretty homogenous type of population, 99.99% white. And they, she's saying, that they said, no, we would rather have the international go first above Switzerland. The situation is that that's okay, but nobody is telling the Swiss from outside of what to do. Yes, they have international laws, international treaties. And the way that the, this, um, this probably was formatted, the question was probably asked of the Swiss people, was probably in such a way to make it look like, oh, you're still going to maintain your sovereignty, but we still want to adhere to international laws and customs and be a part of the international community. And that's probably how this thing was framed. But I guarantee you, if they would have said that, if you say that you want to be part and, and have the international you know, flavor to this, be above Swiss, but just say that everything that Switzerland is going to do from now on is going to be dictated but let's say, how about the Middle East? How about Saudi Arabia or Dubai? Or how about Israel? Or what about even the United States? Or from China, for example? Or, so, or North Korea? Everything is going to be dictated from there. You can vote. You can have your people vote and have your national elections. But that doesn't mean anything. Because we're going to have somebody else outside of Switzerland make all the rules and laws and policy for you, and you have to follow that, and you have no way of voting them in, you have no way of voting them out, it'll be an outside body. I guarantee you the Swiss, all right, they would have said, what the hell are you talking about? No. But see, it's the way you frame the question, the way you ask the question, the way you poll it, the way you present it to the people, and then put it out there for a vote. And I guarantee you they did not, that's not the way that was framed in the words that I just said. Anyways, let's continue. Just to, to get you right, uh, in the interview in the Volkskrant, I, I read that you say, I try to stay away as far as possible from terms as sovereignty and identity. Uh, it has become the playground of populists when I translate it a bit so freely. If you start singing their song, you said, you'll lose. 
what are the words or the lyrics for that method that you use, um, that you have used, maybe stay with this concrete case in Switzerland? Exactly. So we said, you know, in Switzerland, there's this um, legend that you might know about William Tell, which was written by the Sheila. The guy with the apple. Exactly, the guy with the apple. But also in that story, you have the three uh, founding fathers of the old Switzerland who stepped together and swore to each other, we will hold our word and we will defend each other if one of us is being attacked. So they did kind of a contract, right? They agreed on, on yeah, standing together. Um, that's the same with international law. Um, and, but we said it was, if we accepted that law, it was as if one of the three who were sw who was swearing was crossing the finger behind the back, right? And saying, you know, I'm telling them now I accept uh, and I stand with them, but actually I won't do it in the emergency case. So it's the same. We said we don't want Switzerland to be a country known for not holding the word. So that's why uh, we tried to just kind of translate this really abstract principle of international law, of standing together as a community, into what it would mean in an everyday situation. Hmm. That's how we actually try to promote these values, and I consider it still something important to do in a democracy, in a society, to actually um, yeah, speak about these fundamental principles which make us as a community uh, functioning as a democracy. And again, here we explained a lot the, the, the values as they stand in our constitution. And let, yeah. yeah, let me pick up this point. Of so I'm going to stop it right here and basically say that once again, she goes to basically say the three founding fathers of Switzerland, they all agreed that we're going to defend each other in case one of us gets attacked, blah, 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 blah. All right, fine. But she still is saying that they want to be part of the international law and honor contracts and honor treaties and honor... Oh, that's fine. Nobody's saying you're not supposed to do that with international law, but you can still have a sovereign nation and be Swiss first. But if the Swiss don't want that, then that's fine. Let them make that decision. And in that democratic form of government that they have there or whatever form of government, parliamentarian that they have, if the majority of the people have said, hey, we want international law to be above Swiss law, then that's fine. I don't exactly know the parameters of that, um, of how that question was asked and the determination of it. But as I said before, is that that's not the way that most Western de democracies, you know, act. They're they're starting to be uh, starting to become beholden to many on the left side, the socialists, the Marxists, or whatever. But that's not exact. That's not happening here. Like for example, in the United States of America, would we want to? Let the United Na that's basically saying let the United Nations dictate the rules and the laws and the policies and the sovereignty of the United States of America. Is that what we're going to do? We can honor the laws. We can basically say we're going to follow some of the laws from the United Nations and the ones that we want to follow and accept will be a party to them, will be part of the treaty that they're formed. But if we don't want to be a part of that, then we're basically going to say, you know what? we're not going to vote on that or we're going to abstain or we're not a part of that and let the whole world decide to go in that direction. But we as the United States no, say no. And the same thing Douglas Murray is saying is that sovereignty should be by the citizen of the country to decide who is going to make your policy, who is going to be your leaders, how can you vote them in, how can you vote them out if you don't like the direction of the country and go from there. Anyways, we appreciate you taking the time to watch. You've been watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I've been your host. My name is Dr. Nasser. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, like, share, and follow us. Let us know what you think below in the comments, and I'll leave you with my final thought, which is, when you're right, you're right, and when you're left, you're wrong. We'll see you again next time, folks. Take care and stay safe.